Hello, everyone. Welcome back. It's 2022. Yay. I don't know about you, but I'm so excited. Hoping that this year brings us some new opportunities. And uh, we're kicking off our webinar series today with uh, Karen Anderson from Foundation 96. And I'm super excited for you guys to meet her, to find out what she does, how you can connect with her. And we're going to talk about connecting. So let's get to it. So those of you who are on the call that don't know who I am, again, I'm Becky Keen. I'm the founder of Oncology Spa Solutions. I am a master esthetician and a cosmetologist, and I'm also a holistic cancer coach, as well as a hope coach and an oncology mentor. And of course, with the pandemic, I became a webinar host. So the list keeps growing, right? What are we gonna to cover today? We're gonna to do our usual little check-in. We're gonna go over some quotes on connecting. Then I'm going to introduce Karen to you and we'll take a look at what the upcoming schedule is. So first of all, how are you all doing? I hope that, you know, rolling into the new year, I know it's just getting started, but I hope that you all have uh, high hopes and that you're really looking forward to a great and fabulous year. We've kind of come through a couple of tough ones. So uh, I'd like to hear how you're doing in 2022. And you know, uh, when we do these polls, I also like it if you would send me an email. I want to hear how you guys are doing. Have you set goals? You know, I noticed a couple of times I've seen it, and Karen, you've probably seen this too, but people are saying, don't set goals. You know, that's old school. I guess you don't do that anymore because then, you know, you're probably not going to get them and then you're going to feel bad. <laughs> it's like a new way of thinking, I guess. I don't know, but um, I still am a goal setter. I feel like if you don't have a plan, you know that old saying, if you plan to fail, you, uh, or if you fail to plan, you plan to fail. And um, that really does make a difference. If you can get an idea of what you would like to see happen this year and write it down, look at it every day um, and then do one little thing. If it's just one little thing in the direction of getting to that goal and I think you'll make it happen. It's uh, important. How about a vision board? I know a lot of people in our world do a vision board. Um, I really like that. I've this year decided to do something a little bit different. So I've always done vision boards. Uh, but this year I'm going to do uh, starting journaling. I was reading a, something the other day that basically said when you write it down, which we already know this, when you write it down, you make it happen, right? Yeah. There's action in doing so. So instead of just picking pictures and being visual this year, I'm actually going to write them out in a journal and visit it. Karen, do you journal at all? I do. I actually have mine. It sits here on my desk and then I write okay. different things in there about what I want to achieve today. And then I'll open that page, what I want to achieve. And then I leave it there all day. Love it. And, That's and take it. the thing I believe too is you are tell someone about this. And I tell whoever I'm with that day because you've got to be accountable. Yeah, it's true. And it helps you be accountable to yourself. Yeah. Even if you're not sharing that out with anybody else, you know what you wrote down and what you wanted to accomplish. So I, I think that's really key. Thank you for sharing that. Um, I'd love to hear how you guys are getting the word out for your oncology services, because this is really important. Um, all the time I get phone calls from people Patients looking for spa professionals that can help them. Uh, spa professionals asking, how can I connect with the oncology world? So let me know how you are doing this. Are you doing it uh, in your local area? Are you connecting with a doctor or a cancer center possibly? Are you doing social media word of mouth? And if you're using any of those, how are they working for you? please send me an email. Again, it'll be at the end. Uh, or if you're on the website right now, go ahead and just go into the contact me because that sends me an email directly and tell me what you're doing and how it's working for you. We're really trying to get the word out because I think it's so important to connect the cancer patients with us who can help, right? We're here, we're ready, we're waiting. So let's figure a way of really making that happen. I'm looking forward to hearing it. So today our word for the webinar is connect. And uh, this first one, if you can connect with people, you can create your future. Wow, I loved that. It was simply said, and I just perfectly loved it. It's true. 
connecting with people can help create your future. Uh, I've always believed that connecting with people is a basic human need and it feeds our soul as well as the person that we connect with. So it's very important. And um, Brene Brown, whom I love, says we are actually hardwired to connect with others. It's what gives us purpose and meaning to our lives. Without it, there is suffering. Think about that one for just a minute, mm. you know, especially in the cancer world, Karen, I know that you know and understand this, but I hear mm. from people uh, all the time who are going through cancer and they feel so alone and they mm. feel so isolated. Just connecting with somebody would have made all the difference for them. Mm. So again, that's what we do. That's how we can help. Um, the other part of, you know, whatever it is that we do, whatever skill we bring to it is really the icing on the cake. But I'll tell you, and I've heard this one too from many, many patients. They said, yeah, okay, yeah, I loved what you did, but I just love being with you, right? I love that you listened yeah. to me. I love that you knew what I needed. So connecting is important. And I'm excited to hear how we can take that to the next step. So I'd like to introduce our guest today, Karen Anderson, who is the founder of Foundation 96. And um, I didn't have a whole lot of background on you, so I would like you to share how you came to this and what you did. And while you're doing that, I'm going to go ahead and trade out the slides. So go ahead and share a little bit about you. Hey, thanks, Becky. And thanks for inviting me today, too. It's always nice for us to try, as you say, connect is, is probably something that is what my day is about. And I'm linking people that have been uh, finished their active cancer treatment to people that are offering services to help reduce their side effects. So I'm virtually that bridging between the patient or the, can the client, as we call them, because they're patients now, they've finished their treatment, we call them clients, and then they're going to be connected with people like yourselves. So we've gone in and researched every side effect from surgery, chemotherapy, radiation, and target therapies. And then we've looked at all of the different disciplines that can actually help with those side effects. So it has to be published, researched, and qualified. And then we went out and found those people in 15 different countries and have over now 800 listings. And so as soon as I get a, a with, through health consulting, as soon as I get someone that needs to have your service, then I contact you if you're on our service directory. So that's why we put Foundation 96 together. I love it. Um, I'm gonna give you remote control so you can uh, advance the slides. There's arrows at the bottom is usually the way that it works best. <laughs> so tipping cans around, that's what we're all about. So yeah. it's, it's about looking at that positive side and I hope that's exactly what people start to think. It's, it's about a mindset and it's about trying to change the way you think. So the human spirit is stronger than anything that can happen to it. And uh, I had someone the other day that um, said to me, women are designed to, go, to do anything and to live through anything. And so many women have said to me, and men, not just women, have said to me, I've got this. I've been through so much worse than cancer. Yes, I love that. I've got so we are a support network for people that are living with cancer. And I believe I'm not going to say something that people don't know is once you've been diagnosed with cancer, it is an ongoing monetary service from here on in. It is not finished, it is just beginning. Oh, so let's try and help you through that. So we offer an integrated model of care. We support people to have cancer diagnosis. As I said earlier, we connect them with a team of supportive people like estheticians, dietitians, and beauticians, and so many more. We have a single consulting service, and we also can bundle that up into a six-month uh, service. And that wellness support plan is giving people virtually someone to sit with them for six months and help them through all of their needs through that period. We also have the service directory for the business listings, and we also have oncology training. So people who are very good at what they do, we encourage them to be able to design courses so we can sell that to other people. Right, good. 
So our vision is uh, our online integrated evidence-based supportive care community for people transitioning from active treatment to everyday life. So we're trying to bridge the gap between you leaving or the people leaving active treatment and being at home by themselves and asking what now? So that's our mission, to be able to be part of that community. And who am I? Uh, well, I, I started this back in uh, 2000 as an exercise physiologist before we were allowed to treat people with uh, cancer. Uh, we had Parkinson's and MS and diabetes and things like that, which are fairly mainstream and cardiovascular disease. And then I stepped out of the box and believed that people with cancer weren't sick. They needed to be exercised. And that started my journey with that. And how did I get the name? Um, well, I ran a, I ran a survey or a, a little fun thing with 100 of my clients and said, right, we need a name. And we had so many, but it never connected with, with me and what I believed that the vision was going to be. So I eventually looked at the crab and the horoscope crab and we turned it around and 69 probably wasn't our best number. So we flipped it to 96. 96. How did I get foundation? Because I never knew if I wanted it to be a non-for-profit or profit. And I wanted a really strong word that people could feel like we have their back and that foundation is going to be their future. And that was our name. How can we help you? There are so many ways. So what we're looking at now, as I mentioned earlier, what are the side effects? There's pain, anxiety, fear, recurrence, body image. And how can we do that? So let's look at the people that are offering the services. Let's look at their qualifications, certifications, and then we will connect them together. So it will become that community service. So we have health consultants, the six month support plan. So then we can link all of these services under these titles, physical, nutritional, emotional, and then a specialty services. So that could be tattooing, it could be uh, financial support, legal support, uh, any type of support, it could be communities, it could be um, looking at uh, uh, different group places, it could be wellness camps, it could be yoga retreats, and then the oncology training. So they're our main things that Foundation 96 offer. So you're kind of the liaison then. So you are connected to each of these types of services. And then yes. when somebody comes to your site um, they can find those services. Exactly right. And that part of it's free. So the health consulting is a financial part. So people, our clients pay for the health consulting. So that is an important thing. And I only started this or we did, we launched it in oh, October last year in 2021. And the reason for launching this was so the people on the directory, as we're all discussing today, how do we get the referrals and how do we get connected? And the reason for launching this was to be able to have someone that could be human. Because when people were coming on the website and they were just looking through all the services, it was still not connecting in the, in, in the five years that I wanted it to. I had this vision that you as a, as a cancer person in, in a community, whether you be a loved one or family or friend or the person themselves, would go on there and find the service and then contact them. And yes, it did happen, but did it happen in the quantity I wanted? The answer was no. Yeah. So I believe that is about the human contact, exactly what you said. Yep. So now we have the human contact and that human contact is about talking to us and then we link it to the service provider. A lot better plan. Should have thought about this earlier, shouldn't I? But you try these things, don't we, guys? And that's how it, that's how we learn, right? That's how we learn. So then this is our six months individual. And majority of people, I have to say, after one session with our health consultants, sign up for the six months. So we have a very high success rate in the six months because they went, oh, oh, I need you. 
I need you because I need you next month. And I need you, I need to keep talking to you because we're setting goals, Becky. Yes. Exactly what you said. They are not old fashioned to me. Okay. They are real because if you don't have a purpose, you're not going to get to tomorrow. So we've got to find your purpose. We've got to get your flame and we'll light you up and work out how to get there. So when you get home, are you going to go back to work? Is that the job you're going to have? Can you actually get out of bed? Can you move your arm? Are you feeling nauseous? What do you need? And this is what we look at. What do you need? And how are we going to get you that four-week goal? Because big goals are too hard in this environment. We got a four week goal. What is the worst thing right now that you need to address? And how am I going to get you there? So we talk through it and it takes an hour to go through all this. And we eventually nail it by the end of that hour and we go, right, I know exactly who's going to help you with that. So I then go into my database in the directory listing and go, all right, did they say physical? Is it an exercise physiologist? Is it an occupational therapist? Is it an oncology massage? Is it yoga? Is it acupuncture? What physically did they ask for? And what side effect was it that they were asking about? Was it cording from a mastectomy? Oh, okay. I'm going to go to an occupational therapist because I know that they do a good job of it or a physical therapist. Right. So where do they live? What do they do? Do they want it? Virtual, do they want it face to face? Who's the best person for it? So we keep going and drilling down. So if anyone's not familiar with an exercise physiologist in America, I spent five years, as you know, Becky in America, I lived in Virginia. And exercise physiology in America is still about cardiac rehab. Okay. So I had to go into Virginia and train the exercise physiologist in cancer. And I really hope that we can continue that. So what they're trained to do is really look at cancer, exercise, physiology, prescription, testing, connect the lot together. They're your gold standard exercise. You then have exercise therapists, you have um, exercise specialists, you have personal trainers, there's a long list there. But for today's sake, in timing, we'll flick through. So oncology massage therapists specialise in massage. However, they've got more certifications and qualifications, and they've also done a lot more years in the trenches to really know how to treat people in that area. Uh, a lot of the good massage therapists come from a physiotherapist background or a nurse background. So we have found the ones that do a great job in that. Occupational therapists um, are very, very good at rehabilitation from surgery side effects. And they also, depending on what their area of expertise is, they could also be specialising in lymphedema and pain. So they're, they're a tool to, to prescribe. Physiotherapy are the Australian... Canadian word for physical therapist okay. exactly the same so if you're not familiar with that they are about acute care injury and helping people through injury so I will prescribe to them when that someone has an acute injury and then they hand over to an exercise physiologist or an occupational therapist um, to be able to look at the chronic care if there's another injury, we refer back. So now yoga and Pilates, these um, are fairly self-explanatory and I'm sure majority of people know that. But again, what they do is they have got more certifications and understanding about bone metastases and what people can and can't do post-cancer treatment. So we again look at not everybody in yoga we would refer to, but we would definitely look at what the person is offering independently. Okay. Acupuncture is, again, a service that has some very good research at the moment. And the research with acupuncture is reducing pain and also helping people with opening up um, pathways of energy, pathways of blockages. So if I get someone who's tried a couple of things and also have an acupuncture therapist that they love, I would definitely refer them. 
or if they would like to try it as a new therapy because they haven't tried it and they're still struggling, I definitely would support acupuncture. And hopefully it's in their area. So this quote um, I think is lovely, to accomplish great things, we must not only act, but we must also dream, not only plan, but also believe. Nice. Yes, that's a good one. We, um, I, I have such a strong 22 years of experience with so many people and it is a state of mind that I believe is the most powerful thing to help someone get through, not just cancer treatment, but the process of living with, um, with cancer. Yeah. And it is foundationally a triangle. And that triangle is nutritional, physical, and emotional. Absolutely. And each of those points need to be addressed at a different time when that person truly needs that support. So if they're physically good and they're out there exercising and they're doing it great, we don't need to talk about it. Is eating an issue? Are you, are you eating for comfort? Uh, are you on uh, hormone treatment therapies now for the next seven years and you're now gaining weight? Do you need that support? So we need to ask those questions, where are you now? And, and where are we going to get you to where you need to go? So I believe most of you would have a fairly strong understanding of a dietitian. We use dietitians when we have special needs for people with uh, the treatment, cancer treatment, eating, nausea. Nutritionists are a different education, but they are also very good a nutritionist in prescribing dietary and meal planning and education and programs. Mm -hmm. So I look at both of those. Are they a naturopath? Uh, specifically uh, trained in oncology as well? Or yes, and this is where you have to be careful with um, who you prescribe. Just because you're a dietitian or an exercise physiologist or a physical therapist or a beauty therapist or a massage therapist, it doesn't mean you have the qualifications. Correct. It yep. means that you are, are qualified to offer it that service. To be able to give cancer the best it can give as a cancer client, you have to have the extra certifications. You yeah. have to have the extra knowledge. Okay, and that's in dietitian and nutritionist. Now, naturopath is something different. And I, I want to point this out because in Australia and in Britain and in Europe and in Asia, everywhere bar America, yeah. I'll swing that around. I know. A, nat a naturopath is quite similar to a nutritionist in the sense that they offer advice with different types of um, uh, potions. Well, so potions is not a good word. Um, uh, supplements. Yeah. Supplements. supplements and, and natural solutions. And natural types of, of medicines. Okay. And they offer it to complement and help with things like chemotherapy or radiation, etc. Or side effects. They treat side effects after cancer treatment. In America, you have doctor of naturopathy that have two roles. They could be the doctor you go to to treat cancer. Or they could be like our naturopaths who are only helping treat side effects at the end of cancer. Yes. And I think so, it depends on where also in the U.S. because uh, certain states don't allow naturopaths to actually treat cancer. So exactly they can right. Work, they can work with and be complementary, like you mentioned, but they can't yes. be the main physician. Right. So to set the record straight, because I always like to have all the cards on the table, Foundation 96 does not believe or support anyone who would like to treat cancer besides the medical profession. An oncologist is the person that we um, respect, yep. a radiotherapist, an oncology, as in chemotherapy. This is the scientific angle we have chosen in our belief for running our service. 
So if you believe that you are going to treat cancer, then you will not be invited to be on our service directory. Right. Good. That's good to know. So that's just coming from our beliefs. I'm not saying you can't do it. I'm not saying you won't do a good job of it, but it's not our values. Perfect. So we all know emotional support comes in a lot of packages. And again, it could come from um, a psychologist, a hypnotherapist, which is very well researched. So maybe some people don't believe in it, but I got to tell you, they're getting some very, very good results. Grief counselling is usually available in a hospital. A social worker is usually available in a hospital. But those poor social workers, and I'm not talking just about America, I'm talking in Britain and Australia and everywhere else, they are employed by a hospital. And for whatever reason, that hospital thinks that they can do dietitian work to prescribe exercise. I'm surprised they're not what asking them to do facials, yeah, literally. I know. I know. Those poor guys are being given that hat to do every single thing. Not fair. So they refer on to us to help out. So each of these different types of emotional help have all come with different degrees, all different qualifications. They all get different services. I independently look at where people are located, what they've tried already, and what level do they need? Do we need to go for the big guns? Or can we go down into counselling, for example? Right. So Where do we start, to, and I'm probably yeah. sure that it depends on the, the patient or the client, and what are their needs? What are they most concerned about? Yeah, and what's their background? And what have they what have they tried in the past? What has worked? What hasn't worked? Do they already have a psychologist? There's so many pieces to the puzzle there. Do they just need counselling in someone that understands cancer? Right. There's so many things that we have at our fingertips. So this is not an area I ever thought that I would open up because when I first started five years ago, it was only going to be about the health practitioners. It was going to be health professionals that prescribe blah, 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 and it's researched and it's published and that was where I went. But then I ended up with more people on our team and we started to hear and listen to what our clients asked for. Good. And when we did that, bam, did we go there? So art therapy is very um, researched, okay? We know people need sleep. We know people need to be able to have support and coaching. We need legal advice, cosmetic tattooing. I mean, how amazing is that? Yeah. Getting tattooed nipples, I, I'm just like, whoa. What a great idea for someone that's got body image and they need to have that little bit of love. Exactly. I've seen people have amazing tattoos after mastectomies that just makes them feel so unique and special. So whatever you want, we find. And then again, uh, is it oncology esthetician or is it beauty therapist? Depending on where you come from. Right. It is, it is, those words are interchangeable throughout our countries. But at the end of the day, beauty therapy, beauty therapists, oncology esthetician are trained to prescribe. So I will not have just someone that has had that education they have to have gone and get the extra certification. Yep, gone the extra spend. So this is, I think, a very important service because, one, it's not just physical to me. Right. It's also emotional. It is. And when you can get two modalities in one service, bang for your bucks, you are not only going to feel fantastic, you're going to look fantastic, but you're also going to be nurturing the, the soul and the mind. And this is powerful and it's not to be underestimated. Yep, I, I agree. Do you know that I, I met a gentleman the other day and he's in a completely different business, but he said to me, oh my goodness, what you do is such sacred work. Mm -hmm. And I thought, wow, that's a really interesting term. As we started talking, I found out that he had basically lived with cancer with his mom for 20 years. So he understood how important all of these things that you've got put together, how important that is to the patient and that that is literally sacred. That was a yeah. really neat thing to hear. Yeah. It, it, I, I totally agree. And I've had it, you know, it might be five months down the track with someone and I'm still not shifting them. And I'm like, oh, I need something else in my toolbox. What am I missing that I can't get them to this next level? 
I know they want to get there and we've tried and tried and tried. What is it? And I go, you know what? A day spa. <laughs> if, if you can't walk out of a day spa and not float, like, come on. Exactly. And, and I got to say, it is probably one of my little secrets in my toolbox where I go, I know just what you need today. And in four weeks, you're going to check in with me after you've made this appointment, you've gone and experienced this, and maybe break it up. Maybe do a facial one day, one week, and maybe do a massage one week. Like, let's get a whole four weeks going here and break it all up so you had one thing to look forward to. And then this mind shift arrives on my next month appointment, and I go, we did it. There you That's go. it. It's all yeah. I needed. Yeah, it's all I needed. Sauce, right? <laughs> thank you girls for being able to give me this little magic trick and it is it is about just and you don't have to talk and this is the power of going in with a, a qualified esthetician is you can say nothing for an hour right but it is the human touch yeah. and this happy hormones <laughs> that you feel when you get all these beautiful smells and touch connected together and it's in a synapse in your brain you you cannot come out of there and not feel fantastic yes no matter how grumpy you are i've seen it i've seen it all through the years you're right yep and it's not just in there also a good oncology uh massage therapist if they listen and they understand that this wasn't about treatment this is about love and care and nurture for this particular session they will also deliver so i it's it's about when i send the referral and i say this is not about pain management or muscle relaxing or range of motion no this is about love just put your love hat on get the music beautiful my yeah. my, my favorite word love and i i agree yeah. with you it's so key I've uh, when I teach, I always say, if you don't love what you're doing, it don't. comes through your hands. So yeah. uh, if you don't love it, find something else. But if you do love yeah. it, you are in the right place. So okay, so you are in Australia. Yes. And what is the, uh, what would you say the percentage of people that you get patients wise is from the US? Oh, yesterday, <laughs> just happen to have that here. So yesterday was 70% six percent of clients came from the u.s 76 yes wow that was that was yesterday yes hot off the press that one that i love um good. yeah we're dragging we're dragging our chain in australia because i spent that that amount of time in america my focus started to become very much in america and i shouldn't have done that i understand that but I just got so absorbed with finding people in America uh, because I started to see um, so much similarity to our countries. And so while I was building the directory in America, the clients were coming pre predominantly from America. And now I'm back in Australia. Um, I've started to rebuild um, and started to connect. But we're nowhere near yet. Yes. Because remember, we've got 15 countries. Australia's only taking another percentage and then we've got all the rest of the countries. But um, this year we're launching um, a Medicare, oh, I happen to have right here now. So in Australia, we now have the opportunity that we can do five paid sessions from the government. Nice that's tool great. to have. So with us launching that here now in Australia, that's going to open up um, a lot more of our cancer consulting here in Australia. So is that something that you initiated or the... Oh, no, this has been... Uh, this started before I went to America, but I just didn't... Uh, it's just been a time thing, Becky, to try and get things organised coming back because we're so busy with the oncology training. Um, and now this is my... Let's get into what are we doing in January, February goal, and I'll get that up and running. Okay. Um, That's the, awesome, though. Great for you. Um, what are the yeah. numbers? Uh, like, so you've got 15 countries that you're looking at. Who yeah. seems to have the highest cancer numbers? Uh, well, yeah. Oh, yeah. So again, right? yeah, I don't mean to be rude, but you could be leading on that again because of, I mean, remember, we've got 25 million people in Australia. Right. You know, you've got 376 million people in America. So you, 
you have to cut it down and go, okay, let's look at the population and then get the real figures and, and turn that out. Exactly. I have found in my experience throughout the world, we're still looking about one in three people will be diagnosed with cancer. Yep, that's pretty much all. And that's the fairly above the board. So don't have numbers because you've got to convert them all down to populations. Mm -hmm. And I believe, and this is a sad story, and this is something that I find that we are all going to be confronted with in the next five years. And the more people I speak to and the more I read, is that people aren't going in in the last two years to be scanned. Right. They're not going in to the hospitals to get their treatment. And COVID has virtually pushed people away from preventive cancer, diagnosing cancer and treating cancer. Right. And, can and COVID has started to be the, the forerunner. And the sad part of that story is the people that I'm starting to get now have stage four. Right. stage three and they didn't need to be they could have done this two years ago and it not be at stage four yep. so now I'm starting to see a stage four breast cancer increase in my data and I didn't want to see that I know I was hoping that wouldn't yeah. be that way they actually predicted that at the uh, about the end of 2020 because they weren't allowing people to come in for their screenings. So that meant that if you had a lump or felt or found a lump, you couldn't get in to have that diagnosed early. Yeah. And so they said, we'll probably see more, more advanced cancers and also more cancer um, yeah. just because of the stress and uh, you know, quarantine and isolation and all kinds of things like that. So um, I was hoping that wouldn't be the case, but I'm starting to see it here too. Yeah, it's, it's, and I'm seeing it all through all of our clients that come through. So the, the, the thing that I am proud about, and I, I kudos to everybody in every country right now, so much, so much stress in two years of trying to run a business. Can we open to be closed? We've got masks, have any clean? I mean, how, I don't know. Everyone did not close their doors. And I probably maybe five businesses in the last two years have actually closed down out of our service directory. I truly predicted hundreds. Right. And as I'm catching up with them in this new year, I'm slowly getting through to everyone having conversations. How have you gone? How is it going? What is happening? And the interesting thing is some businesses have actually thrived yes. because they've reinvented themselves and offered this virtual service. So they and they've actually the created a whole new industry for their business. Yep. They found a way to connect and they, they knew how important that was. So that's great. So if somebody would like to um, get in touch with you, they can either go to the website or to you. What is your um, process and how would you like that to work? So there's a couple of things. If you would like to go on as a service provider um, on the directory, you log in to Foundation 06, you just go onto the website, you register, which means email address and create a password. It links you into a business page. You follow the prompts on how to do that. You press submit. It then comes through to our uh, service directory team and uh, the uh, sorry, the cybersecurity check you out, sorry, they go through and check who you are, where do you come from, what are your social media links, what's happening underground, do you got any bad reviews, who are you? So once you've got all that done, we then uh, process it, you'll receive an email to say it's been processed, uh, that then becomes live, we then start your social media marketing, and we do that as often as we can possibly manage to do, and we start to get your name out there within the health and wellness professionals and the uh, cancer community. Is there any cost involved for somebody to be a uh, be listed on your site? No, no. This is something that I offer as a as a free service. What we do offer is people want that, which is um, what a lot of people tend to ask for, is helping with marketing and advertising. So, if your marketing with your small dollar in your business or do you want to be part of 800 people marketing globally it makes a lot more impact on the back end of google and it will we can help you with your wordings and the back end of your website so 
that's something that we do in there. But as in the service, um, anyone in the cancer community can go into Foundation 96, add a business listing, find a business listing. They can do a cancer care plan for free. So ask your clients, go in there and they, what cancer, what treatment, what side effects, and what will happen in there is it will bring out a printout for them uniquely about who they could contact that could help them with those side effects. They email it to themselves. Uh, we don't store it. We don't check it. We don't monitor it. It has nothing to do with us. It's completely between the cancer client and themselves and our website. We also have um, different forms about tracking your treatment. So it's a cancer treatment form in there. Anyone can go in and do, and it asks all about what they've had done. Your chemo, radiation, who have you had, what's happened. And then they just print it out again and keep it themselves, email it back. And what that gives them is a record of what they've had done. Correct. Because in five years, when you don't remember that, it's not good to go back. Yeah. So there's lots of free things. There's um, what chemotherapy side effects. If you link on, you can link on radiation. We've li we've listed it all on there. So resources. There's news feeds. So there's a lot of things that they. If you now go, okay, I've my client needs extra help, and they need to have, and you know they need a dietitian, then you can link in there and find one for them or ask them to do it. So use it as your referring service as well. I like that. Because, yeah, because uh, it's it's not easy to find qualified right. people at your fingertips. And you've already done the screening and they're already ready to go. <laughs> yeah, we've done the hard yards, I tell you. <laughs> Oh, so this is fabulous. And I hope you guys do connect with Karen and at least check out the website and see if there's anything that you can either uh, be a part of, or if you want to, like Karen just said, which I love, have this be your referral network, because we talk about that when I teach. So that's perfect. So Karen, thank you so much. It's been a pleasure having you on. You've done a wonderful and a fabulous job of putting together something that is just so important for those going through cancer. So thank you. Thank you. Oh, thank you, Becky. Okay. And everybody, we will uh, catch you next time. Our next webinar is going to be in February. We'll post it on the website. So uh, until then, take care, stay strong, stay healthy, and we'll see you soon. Bye. Mm -hmm.